So you open Google Chrome on your phone. You're rushing to buy tickets to a concert that all your friends are going to. Picture yourself now. Crowd surfing to the front, being invited onto the stage, backstage the world tour, and before you know it, you're dancing in Tokyo. Wait, what? Three tickets left? It's a good thing your saved payment details autofill quickly and securely. There's no place like Chrome. Download Google Chrome on your phone. When you're ready to pop the question, the last thing you want to do is second guess the ring. At BlueNile.com, you can design a -a one-of-a-kind ring with the ease and convenience of shopping online. Choose your diamond and setting. When you find the one, you'll get it delivered right to your door. Go to BlueNile.com and use promo code WELCOME to get $50 off your purchase of $500 or more. That's code WELCOME at BlueNile.com for $50 off your purchase. BlueNile.com, code WELCOME. This is Optimal Health Daily, Episode 2165. How to Boost Metabolism in the Morning and Get a Healthy Relationship with the Scale, both by Shalene Johnson of shaleenjohnson.com, and I'm Dr. Neil, your host and narrator. Thanks so much for joining me once again on Optimal Health Daily, this time for two short posts. So with that, let's get to our first post of the day and start optimizing your life. How to Boost Metabolism in the Morning by Shalene Johnson of shaleenjohnson.com. Who wouldn't love to take advantage of a quick boost to their metabolism in the morning? It can help you exponentially improve the rest of your day by maximizing fat loss, clearing toxins from the body, bettering blood circulation, elevating moods, keeping a youthful appearance, increasing natural immunity, and giving you more energy. Uh, sign me up. Before we get to how we begin getting all this metabolism goodness revved up to ensure a super healthy day ahead, it's critical to quickly understand why your metabolism does what it does. Your body's major fat-burning machinery is your muscle tissue. A lot of people are well aware now that your metabolism is largely controlled by your thyroid. This is the butterfly-shaped gland located in your throat. But what is the actual machinery that it uses to carry out its mission? Muscle has a lot to do with it. It's kind of like an endocrine organ on its own. A lot of people don't realize this. Muscle is actually like a reservoir, a containment center for anti-aging hormones. This is why folks who have more muscle on their frame tend to age better. They also tend to come back faster from injuries. Now, why is this your body's fat-burning machinery? Well, muscle is very expensive for your body to carry around. It burns off a lot more calories just having it on your frame, which leads us back to how we start getting all the benefits of a sped-up metabolism bright and early. Exercise. Surprised by that? I don't think so. One of the amazing benefits of exercising as soon as possible is post-exercise oxygen consumption. Basically, this means you're burning more calories throughout the day by exercising in the morning. Listen, that doesn't mean you can't exercise if you can only hit the gym after work, but just get a little bit in the morning to get your metabolism at a different level and utilize all the benefits it brings. What are some early morning workout ideas, depending on your time? Well, let's say you have an hour. In that case, hit the gym, lift weights, and do some cardio. If you have 30 to 45 minutes, do pie yoke. Or if you have just four minutes, use a Tabata workout. Is it possible to actually get a good workout in four minutes? Oh yes, you can absolutely kick your butt. The latest science using muscle biopsies confirms this type of exercise works. What this looks like is 20 seconds of intense movement followed by 10 seconds of rest and then repeat that for a total of four minutes. Examples of Tabata include burpees, bodyweight squats, upper body for first 20, lower body for second, and a rebounder, which is a mini trampoline. Rocket scientists, literally, say using a rebounder is the best form of exercise. This is something NASA has been utilizing because of the G-force that's created. When you come down on the trampoline, your cells are getting an impact that's significantly heavier than just your normal everyday walking around. So when you elevate off the rebounder, you're essentially weightless for a moment. It's making your cells, all the cells in your body and your tissue matrix, do little push-ups. And this is wonderful for your lymphatic system as well. And if you find it uncomfortable to jump, 
please know that it's different on the rebounder. The impact isn't felt in your joints. You don't feel it the same way you do when you're jumping on a hard surface that doesn't bounce back with you. The best thing about the rebounder, in addition to all the health benefits, is that it's fun. I will run on my rebounder. It doesn't hurt my knees or my back. It's a wonderful way to have a high-intensity workout that's still low impact. People, there's no excuse to not get those four minutes in. Get a Healthy Relationship with the Scale by Shaleen Johnson of shaleenjohnson.com. Are you one of those that obsess over the number on the scale? Do you weigh yourself almost daily or even more than once a day, hoping that each time you step on the scale, the number will go down? While it is good to check in from time to time, obsessing over this number isn't healthy, nor is this number always an accurate reflection of your fitness level. Here are three things to keep in mind when weighing yourself so that you have a healthy relationship with the scale. How to have a healthy relationship with the number on the scale. One, set an increment by which you will weigh yourself. While you don't want to become obsessed with weighing yourself, you also don't want to get on the scale willy-nilly. If you don't check in periodically, you could find yourself stepping on the scale one day wondering, how did I gain 10 pounds? You need to monitor whether or not there's an upward or downward trend in your weight. So, set a time increment by which you will weigh yourself. Typically, once a week will work. But if you do end up weighing yourself once a day, be okay with the fact that your weight may fluctuate two to four pounds from day to day, depending on a number of things. Two, know your weight can fluctuate two to four pounds from day to day. There are so many things that can affect your weight. Where you are in your cycle for those born genetically female, the amount of salt in your diet, when you had your last meal, and when you had your last bowel movement. Even the rotation of the earth, believe it or not. So if you step on the scale and you're four or even five pounds heavier than the day before, please don't freak out. On the contrary, if your weight keeps going up and up, you also don't want to get on the scale every day and make an excuse like, oh, I must be four pounds heavier today because of the earth's rotation. You simply want to monitor whether your weight is consistently going up, down, or staying the same based on whatever fitness goals you have. And three, make sure the number you're striving for is realistic. Too often, people get a number stuck in their head that they think they should weigh, and they obsess over it. Maybe it was a number at which they felt comfortable in their own skin. However, based on a variety of things, it may no longer be healthy or realistic for their body type. Here's an example. A week after I had my son Brock, I weighed what I weighed before I had him, but I wasn't even close to the same size. I was what people call skinny fat. By the number on the scale, you'd think I was back to my pre-baby body, but that was far from the truth. Muscle weighs more than fat, and at that time, I had less muscle and more fat. If you're striving to hit a particular number on the scale, make sure that number makes sense based on the amount of muscle you have. If you're strength training, you'll want to add four to five pounds to that magic number. Final thoughts. Bottom line is, don't judge yourself based on the number on the scale. Keep sticking to those healthy habits and don't obsess over your weight. Know that your worth is based on who you are as a person, not whether or not you can see your abs. You just listened to the posts titled How to Boost Metabolism in the Morning and Get a Healthy Relationship with the Scale, both by Shalene Johnson of shaleenjohnson.com. This episode is brought to you by Liquid IV. Whether you're working out, side on your tan, or running errands at the perfect pace, Liquid IV powder keeps you going with two times faster hydration than water alone. Because real life is extreme enough. Real people, real flavor, real hydrating. Buy a stick in store or at liquidiv.com with the code podcast for 20% off your order. Nothing says summer fun like grilling outside with help from Whole Foods Market. From family reunions to hanging with friends, you'll find the perfect spread. Like Animal Welfare Certified Bone-In Ribeye, Top Sirloin and Chicken Kebabs. You can just imagine those perfect grill marks. Keep your wallet happy with sides and fixins from 365 by Whole Foods Market. Plus, beer, pie, fresh produce, the list goes on. Can't take the heat? Let them cater your event. Make summer happen at Whole Foods Market. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Today's author, Shaleen, was mentioning how misleading the number on the scale can be. 
and she's absolutely right. So many of my weight loss patients would go through the emotional roller coaster of weighing themselves multiple times each day. They would love the scale in the morning and hate it by the time they were ready to go to bed. Our weight absolutely fluctuates up and down throughout the day, and this is very normal. It's kind of like the stock market. If we watch the changes that happen in the stock market every hour of every day, it would be awful. We'd be constantly watching ourselves make money and then watch it quickly evaporate hundreds of times a day. This is why, just like with the stock market, we really need to focus on trends or changes over time. And when I mean time, I'm talking weeks, months, and years. In fact, researchers have found that losing weight quickly is not a good thing because when that happens, we're either losing water weight, which may leave us dehydrated, or we're losing muscle. And we definitely don't wanna lose water or muscle. Fast weight loss is very unlikely to be a loss of actual body fat. So when it comes to true fat loss, we can think of it like that cliche we learned when we were kids. Slow and steady will win the race. All right, that'll do it for today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll be here reading to you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.